since I know this will bother some people. That's obnoxious. All right. Let's get this thing fired up. Any, any grid heater? Yeah, we're gonna see grid heater. It's 47 degrees. There you go. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna go over everything wrong with my 2006 Ram 2500 that I bought sight unseen because that's just what YouTubers do. So let's get into that. All right, today's video, like I said, we're gonna be talking about everything wrong with this thing. First things first, we're gonna start with the door. You guys seem to love the door. So it's this little hinge thing right here and a bunch of guys gave me suggestions and whatnot, but yeah, you can see it. I might end up just getting a new hinge for it, to be honest, but it is loud. So, there you go. That is the first thing wrong with this truck. Now, I'm gonna make that video, and we're gonna go over literally everything, and I apologize, we're next to the highway. That sounded good. So, first things first. <laughs> after the door okay let's turn the key on and the radio off I'm gonna put my left turn signal on you see how it's left look at that now I'm gonna put my right turn signal on so it's not gonna do it now but if I put the left turn signal on mo see that look at that I have the left turn signal on so you have to push it really hard and it'll look at that that's an electrical problem so we need a turn signal switch I have to push down on it pretty hard look at that I have I've left turn signals on see that so that's the first thing wrong with this truck is it needs a turn signal switch. So we're gonna go over the basics and then we're gonna get into more expensive stuff later um, if I turn this on, I dropped my phone and it recorded all of that. If I turn that on and I'm driving down the road, the squeak, it stops at higher speeds. But the squeak that the blower motor makes is louder than the exhaust. Like it want, if you're cruising 80 down the highway, which I'll get to that in a second with the door seal. If you're cruising 80 down the highway and you hear exhaust, you hear the radio, you hear the door seal that leaks, this little bit of squeak, it sounds like a mouse in there as it's spinning and the lower speeds are worse than higher speeds. And it's so obnoxious, it's just like chirping the entire time. So we need a blower motor. It's really loud, it is pretty obnoxious, which brings me to my next thing. We do at some point need a door seal. Cause the door seal is kind of bad. And it makes very loud noises going down the road. So, that's the next thing. We got the door seals. All right, so we're gonna get into a couple of engine bay stuff. So, unfortunately, the truck definitely needs at least one injector. I don't know how many it needs, but it at least needs one. So, the truck will randomly idle. Like, it'll be idling great, and then out of nowhere, it'll just start freaking out and getting all, like, It'll just start idling weird. Also, somebody, uh, that's supposed to be mounted up there. So it'll just start idling weird and misfiring kind of, sort of, and like burling and burping, and it just, it's just weird. Um, so we definitely need at least one injector. I'm gonna pull them out and get them tested at some point. It's gonna cost like 300 bucks just to get them tested, but I am gonna do that. So that's number one under the hood. Number two, this thing has a massive oil leak, which you can't see because of the wet parking lot but the case, the entire front case is leaking. So I need to fix that, which we're ordering all the parts today. We should have them sometime, uh, depending on when everything comes in. I don't know, but we're gonna have to do the front case. So the camshaft's gotta come out of the motor. I gotta go get dowels, I gotta, uh, all that stuff. So that's gonna suck, but I do have to do that. Um, one little minor thing, besides, like we'll go over the, the like this is broken. Um, and a lot of the wiring just kind of looks like ass, which we will be going over and doing better. Like this is from the previous owner or previous, previous owner. I don't know. I don't like to call people out without knowing who it is, 
but there's that so you can see like the oil leak on like on the alternator and shit we just did the oil pan gasket um none of the gauges are hooked up like for the egt there's a transmission temp sensor there's a boost set a boost gauge like none of that stuff's actually hooked up but that's the next thing wrong with this truck elect injectors and electrical also it doesn't have a uh, fan shroud all right so next thing wrong with this truck i'm going to come back to the interior here the speedometer if you are doing 80 miles an hour on the or if you're doing 90 miles an hour on the speedometer you're actually doing 80 so the speedometer up in the higher range is about 10 miles an hour off and i've kind of been just using the average of like okay at 10 miles an hour it's 9 at 20 it's 18 at 30 it's 27 and so on and so forth at 40 you subtract 4 at 50 you subtract 5 yada yada but once you hit about 70 80 ish uh, it starts to change there a lot more drastically. Like if you're doing 80, you're doing like 71. So, and then when you're doing 90, it's actually doing 80. So a little bit more drastic up top, not by much, maybe by one. But that is the next thing that is physically wrong with this truck is the fact that the speedometer is way off. Um, next thing wrong, this thing doesn't work anymore. Uh, I don't know what the deal is with that, but I would like to fix it because these are supposed to auto tint, which is pretty cool. And then half the vents, like this vent's broken, that vent's broken, and then this vent's broken. You can see there's a little flappy thing there. Typical Dodge stuff. But I love the interior on these trucks, these 06 trucks. Um, they're just, it, it's honestly my favorite interior, cloth seats, all that stuff. So that's just all the stuff physically wrong with it on the inside. I did get lucky. I got the uh, four wheel drive on the floor. We have the under tray here. This is a big horn truck. So I get the power outlet on the inside. You guys know I love my big horn. So th none of this stuff is me complaining. This is just literally like going over everything that's physically wrong with the truck. Now the next thing, obviously I'm not gonna get underneath the truck, but when you're just driving the truck, you're just cruising everything, this thing actually runs really, really good. You know, it'll do 90 miles an hour all day, does not hesitate, no cares in the world. But once you start hooking a trailer up to it and you start climbing mountains, the transmission does have a tendency to get a little hot. So to combat this issue, there's a bypass valve, I guess, on the front uh, on the front cooler that we can install. And then we also need to get rid of the cooler that's on the side of the block because when those fail, they take out the transmission because you can't have coolant in your transmission. It'll just mess everything up and then you need a transmission. So we get rid of that and then we install a under the body uh, transmission cooler with a fan, maybe with a thermostat. So that's the other thing that we need, but the transmission gets hot when you're towing a lot. And it's like, it's most of the time it's fine. If you're cruising 72 all day in overdrive, it will absolutely take it. Never overheat, none of that shit. It's once you start getting about 64, if you don't turn overdrive off, you're gonna start cooking stuff. So I've just learned that lesson over time. So now that I know that, it's a lot easier to keep the transmission cool. Unfortunately, when I leave my house and there's two massive mountains back to back, it really makes it hard to keep the transmission cool when you have to literally slow down to 20 miles an hour, make a 90 or no, it's uh, probably a 270 degree turn. Like you have to like come back around and it's hard to then go from 20 and then get it up to where the transmission's happy. So that kind of makes it difficult. But once you're moving thing, like I, I was able to pull that 21,000 pound trailer across the country. You're doing 72 all day. So the next thing that is physically wrong with the truck, obviously since I'm towing with it, you guys don't like these rubber band tires. They really do well, I'll be honest, but unfortunately, even though they are a load range E and a 10 ply tire, they're a 65 pound tire and they're only rated at 2270. By the way, I'm doing this video out in the rain for you guys because that's just me. Hope you guys enjoy. 2270, so that means that 2540 is what the rear axle is rated for and the front axle is rated for. What was, no, what I say about that? Um, yeah, 4540. So that means that the truck is physically rated at what, 9,000 pounds, like the whole thing. So if this truck's empty, it's perfectly all right. But once you strap a trailer to it, you are actually overweight on the tires. I had an experience before where I actually got 40,000 miles out of my last set. So we are gonna be upgrading to some 35s. Uh, you know, once these wear down, I'm not gonna replace brand new tires. Like these will do fine. They're not gonna blow out or anything like that as long as you know, you're watching it and you make sure there's no cuts or anything like that. But the, the truck will physically do it. It'll be all right. 
Next thing wrong with the truck, as you guys love to point out, is the uh, the underbelly rot, uh, which we will be getting taken care of. Um, I was gonna ignore it for the longest time. I'm not super worried about it right now, but we're gonna get this whole piece cut out. I'm gonna have my dad do it uh, next year. So you guys know how I love body work. Uh, that's why I'll just pay him to do it ultimately. But there you go. So unfortunately, a lot of rot on this side. The other side's not at near as bad. Like if I come over here, like it's just starting. But as of now, I mean, I was told the truck is inspectable. So one of the next things wrong with this truck physically is the steering. And as good as I've got it, it still kind of slightly ping pongs you around. You have to be wary of it. Like you can kind of see like this. It's just enough that even though it's as tight as it can be, like if I replaced this box, it would be way worse than what it is right now. But there is still always that little bit of slop, unfortunately, with these bigger Rams, unless you go and buy the expensive boxes, which just right now I don't want to, I can't justify doing that. So it does ping pong you a little bit around. It does take a little bit of attention for you to pay, you know, if, if you're not paying attention, you could probably veer off one way or the other, this and that. So you always got to be paying attention, but it is one of those things, typical Dodge steering. It is in the box. Uh, I could probably tighten it up a little bit more. I just didn't want to push my luck with it, but it could definitely be tightened up a little bit more. That's pretty much all the problems this truck has now. Now, unfortunately, when I bought it, it did need a carrier bearing. It did need a U-joint. I had to put a fuel pump in it. We drove across the country without a, a working fuel pump, I found out. And yeah, that kind of sucked. Um, there was some things wrong under the hood. You know, we fixed some of the wiring issues and all this and that. We had to take the lift kit off. So this has a leveling kit up front from Rough Country. And then it's just factory with the... I like to set them on the bump stop. But I have the timbrins back here. So the truck sits perfectly level now. If I take one of the timbrins out, this truck will squat a little bit. So it is lifted up probably about... I'd like to say two or three inches in the front and about an inch in the back. So that's about where it's sitting. And I, personally, I think it looks good. For what it is, practicality wise, it just makes sense. Um, I like my reverse leveled trucks, but this does rub a little bit depending on the situation, if you know, depending on the articulation as well. Um, so when we go 35s, I definitely don't want to lower the truck any more than it is now. Honestly, I like the look of the lowered trucks, but it just, it will not be practical with 35s. So we're going to get some tires that are rated for a little over 3,500 pounds a piece. So that'll put it at 14K rated for the truck, 7K per axle, and then everything will be good. So as all that we have installed, I'm gonna go over all the stuff we've installed too. So we got the aux tank installed with the 105 with the GPI pump, 105 gallons. We got the headache rack from DZ, that's all installed. Uh, we got the new fire extinguisher mounted up here. We have an engine mount crane back here new hitch all this stuff we have a five inch straight pipe exhaust uh, 80 horsepower tune is what it came with when i bought it we did install the fourth gen mirrors because i got them at no cost uh, my dad just had them laying around and they were for the wrong truck so i got those installed we ended up doing some interior mods we got these installed we have the aux beam light bar which by the way if you guys don't uh, go buy one of these. They are freaking sweet. Uh, they're in the sponsorship folder down in the description, but they flash amber or they flash white. So right here, we did some interior modifications. I cleaned the back out of this really well, but actually I'm going to do it on the other side because that side has the seatbelt. Uh, we also installed the seven-way connector back, back here. I had a shock for this. I broke it. We have our toolbox back here. Everything's all sealed up just for shits and giggles. I don't see any water in there, so that's a good sign. I'm going to go step on that. Uh, so we are using this truck for some mobile work as well as a little bit of hot shot. Um, unfortunately, I went and did that load the other day. I think my profit on that was like 250 bucks. So that's literally for you guys. We are making money, and I'm not going to disclose on how like I'm actually making money, but like between the shop and hotshot i have another business venture that you guys i'm not going to tell you guys for probably another year or so um that's going to be a surprise video down the road but that is where all my money is coming from so like the shop is paying for itself yes but 
I, I can't wait to disclose that video to you guys. That, that's going to be a good year down the road, though. This is the only spoiler alert you're getting. So now, watch this. I'm able to stuff pillows back here. I have a full mattress or a, a full comforter back there. And we flipped these upside down and put one nut on the back. So it, it spaces the seats up ever so slightly. So all I got to do, lift the seat up, lock it in. It can be a pain with the pillows. Yeah, the pillows make it extremely difficult. Um, they're not made to fit back here, but it's nice that I can utilize that space for something different. Oh, there we go. That's way better. So you guys can see that. You lift it up, push it back, lift the seat, clicks into both of them, boom. That side does it as well. So that's the modification we made. We also have the subwoofers underneath. We've got nice floor mats. I gotta take this back to the shop. But those are the modifications that we made on the inside. As well as installing this guy, the light bar, and these guys here because of the phone magnets and stuff. Sorry about that. So, flash warning for you guys. If you guys want this light bar, go and uh, check out link in the description. So, on off, mode. If you hit the mode, it has a bunch of different ones. You can see yellow and amber. Flash warning. So, it'll shine yellow. Or, if I hit the button again, It'll do white and amber. So if you guys need that, I need to see if they can get me one for the back as well, because we will be using this thing for emergencies and whatnot. I always leave it on amber because the cops can't, I can't get in trouble for that because it's amber. They can't say anything about it being a light bar. So I leave it on amber. That way if I get pulled over and they try to say something, Truck is 100% legal. No if, ands, or buts. Tires are covered. Window tints within the certain specification. I am gonna be dumping some 5% over this, so that's the only thing that we have left. So there, there is only physically a few more things we're gonna be doing for dress up on this. I want the little uh, bug deflector on the front. I want darker tint all the way around, 5%. There's only, a, like I said, there's only a few minor things that we're actually gonna be doing to it. Uh, the front and rear bumpers, I don't know what we're gonna do um, down the road. Maybe we throw a roll pan on it, but I do kind of like the beefed look. So if we can get like bumpers to match the fender flares or something like that, um, that'd be pretty sweet. But the truck already came with the taillights and the headlights that I like. I like this C shape. So kind of matches the modern stuff. But yeah, this is basically my mobile rig. Um, I use it for hot shot. It's got a B&W turnover ball as well. And all my tools are in the back here. This thing does gnarly burnouts. I've been last night. I kicked this thing sideways probably four or five times with Josh, Thor. So I do need to get this mess cleaned up here, which we're gonna be doing now. Yeah, we also have an air compressor up there just in case. Uh, it kind of sucks, so I definitely need to get a bigger one. But besides that, there's the truck for you guys. If I missed anything or you guys want any more information about it, um, it is a 9,000 GVWR truck. So let me know if you guys are interested in anything else on the truck, and I'll go over that in a future video. But this is pretty much everything wrong with my 2006 Ram 2500 that I bought sight unseen. Also, stuff like that, it's a work truck. So we're definitely not gonna make the truck perfect down the road, but we're gonna make it, we're gonna make the truck perfect running wise and mechanically, but we're not gonna make it perfect looks wise. Like the truck's always gonna get used. It's gonna get beat up. That's just how it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Go check out the description down below. We just got our website up as well, cpstevemiller.com. Go check it out. Um, also on top of that, mind you, we're going to be making some updates and changes. So the website's not completely done yet, but we are going to be working with it in the future. Um, go sign up for mud flaps, save yourself some money. We're getting almost $1.78 off a gallon, sometimes $2 off a gallon, depending on where you are. So insane savings with mud flap. Use my link, uh, referral link. You get $10 free. I get $10 free. It's an awesome deal and you're saving a shitload of money. So don't, if you're paying the pump price, you're nuts. I'm telling you, I can get your fuel for way cheaper than you can right now. So go do that. If you already have a fuel card, still sign up for Mudflap. It's good. They don't send you a fuel card. They use the app on your phone. It's super easy to do. I did a video on it a while back. You can go check that out as well. 
But other than that, check out the stuff on Amazon down below. A lot of this stuff is on there. The Oxbeam light bar is in the sponsored section. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.